Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, let's talk about 5G. There are a lot of confusion about 5G. So in this video, I'm going to try to explain to you in layman terms 5G and what matters to you. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a far better understanding of 5G. And specifically, if you're buying a new smartphone that has 5G, there are some things that you need to note. Uh, so let's talk about that. And again, if you think about 5G, most of us actually think about just speeds. Yes, we will be getting faster speeds with 5G, but that's not the case every time. And 5G is just not about speeds. Uh, so what is 5G? 5G is technically an improvement over the existing 4G LTE networks. And this 5G implementation uh, will uh, happen soon and will stay for the next 10 odd years with us. So let's talk about what are the improvements. And the first improvement that you will uh, see with the 5G connection is known as latency. And what do you uh, mean by latency? Latency is the delay of one packet from here to the other place. And in fact, if you do a lot of gaming, on your smartphone etc you might notice that lag that is caused because of high latency and uh, you might say yes i'm able to perfectly do gaming on my existing 4g smartphone yes you can do that and uh, but the latency the average latency on a 4g lte connection is about 50 milliseconds and guys this is almost the best case scenario it's generally a lot higher but on uh, 5G, uh, they are aiming to lower this latency to as low as one millisecond for real time communication. Uh, they haven't achieved that. For example, I was uh, reading some papers from Verizon that they already implemented 5G in US and they are experiencing a latency of about 28 to about 30 milliseconds. So yes, we haven't reached that magic number of one millisecond yet, but hopefully with future networks, uh, the latency should lower and definitely it will be, uh, it is actually currently even faster and better latency than 4G. So that's a big improvement. Another thing is that uh, 5G, uh, what do you say, networks will uh, allow us to have a lot more devices in a particular area. And uh, let me give you a very crude example. Uh, for example, with 4G, uh, in a one uh, square kilometer area, generally uh, it can support about 1 lakh devices. With 5G, they're claiming that they can increase this by 10x, that is about 10 lakh devices. So again, we can have a lot more devices in a particular area. For example, to give you a very crude example, uh, if you have ever been to a stadium or something right now because of COVID, we can't do that. But uh, if you have ever, uh, let's say last year you went to a stadium and stuff, and uh, you're trying to access your smartphone on a cellular network, you might have noticed that the data speeds are so sluggish, it might hardly connect. And that is because it simply cannot uh, connect to that many devices. This should actually be solved with 5G. It will support a lot more devices simultaneously connecting. And they achieved this uh, because of a lot of new technologies. Uh, actually, most of the smartphones uh, that are 5G enabled will support MIMO and even multi-user MIMO uh, with 2x2, 4x4 or even 8x8 antenna configuration. And they also use beamforming and other technologies to uh, get higher throughput. So again, uh, the thing of congestion that we call, uh, that we frequently experience in very crowded areas should be a thing of past with 5G. Now let's talk about uh, the 5G bands and uh, they are actually divided into probably two, uh, that sub six gigahertz and the millimeter wave. And to give you an idea, uh, the millimeter wave is uh, technically far faster uh, that is the faster implementation of 5G, that speed test that we see 1 gigabit, 1.5 gigabits, etc. are all on millimeter wave. But millimeter wave is not practical in every area. I'll talk about it why. Uh, the other part is the sub 6 gigahertz band. And uh, again, this is also divided into actually uh, quite a few. It's actually known as FR1. And in fact, uh, if we talk about uh, the uh, bands, it ranges for 410 megahertz to all the way to about 6 gigahertz. In fact, they are also trying to implement it up to 7 gigahertz, but officially 410 megahertz to about 6 gigahertz. Even they might uh, increase it up to 7 gigahertz. And this is also now further divided uh, below 1000 megahertz and above 
2.5 gigahertz. In fact, uh, the above 2.5 gigahertz is known as the mid band. And uh, to give you an idea, why are they doing this different different bands, even sub 6 gigahertz? Let me give you a very crude example of Wi-Fi routers. We all have it in our houses, offices. And if you recall, uh, we have the 2.4 gigahertz band, that is the regular Wi-Fi that we call. And if you notice, the range of the 2.4 gigahertz band is actually pretty good. But the speeds that you get are just average, uh, not super, super fast. Uh, now, if you have the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band, the speeds that you get are far better. In fact, I would say two, three times better than 2.4 gigahertz band. But if you notice, the 5 gigahertz band Wi-Fi range is a lot less that's the thing uh, the sub 6 gigahertz uh, also uh, we have the same thing uh, below 1000 megahertz implementation what they have for the sub 6 gigahertz will have a lot longer range uh, but uh, if we move to the higher bands uh, uh, that is the mid band the range will uh, reduce but again we'll get higher speeds uh, but still i would say so if we have implementations of uh, what do you say sub uh, thousand megahertz the speeds uh, raw speeds that we'll get might not be faster than 4g lte but again you do get advantages of 5g for example low latency and uh, far more devices can be achieved i feel in india uh, we might have the mid band uh, that is the above 2500 uh, megahertz to about uh, 6 gigahertz uh, so this will give us actually decent speeds in couple of hundred megabits uh, and uh, we, can, we can get decent uh, range. So I feel in India, uh, we will be getting a mix of this mid band. Uh, so again, but it's advisable if you're buying a new smartphone to support all the popular uh, multiple, what do you say, 5G bands, because some areas might, they might implement, what do you say, if area is not that crowded and they need that range, they might implement under 1000 megahertz, uh, but in urban areas, uh, etc. Mostly, uh, we will get the mid band that is around 2500 megahertz to about 6 gigahertz. And now let's talk about millimeter wave. Uh, this is also known as an FR two and uh, it's actually 30 gigahertz onward technically uh, from 24 to 50 gigahertz and as i've given you that example of the wi-fi router also that 5 gigahertz is actually very fast but again the range of the 5 gigahertz band is simply not that great that's the same case even with the millimeter wave in fact <laughs> the millimeter wave signal strength is so weak that even if a tree is there in the middle uh, it will actually block the signal. In fact, if it's raining heavily, the signal will be blocked. And in fact, if you have walls and stuff, uh, it will simply not penetrate. So, uh, millimeter wave, yes, you can get very high speeds. Uh, uh, you can get those gigabit speeds on millimeter wave. But the problem is the range is simply not that great and it can be easily blocked. In fact, due to bad weather or even if a tree, etc., any obstacle is there, it will get blocked. Uh, so, these uh, ISPs, if they want to implement millimeter wave, they have to put a lot of mini towers and that becomes very, very expensive. In fact, uh, every couple of 100 meters, they might have to put uh, small towers and they, it should have actually line of sight. Uh, that's why uh, in US, uh, some of the vendors are implementing millimeter wave, but uh, it's a combination of millimeter wave and sub six gigahertz span. But the problem with the millimeter wave is that if you are indoors and stuff, you'll hardly get the signal because it needs that line of sight and the signal again get disrupted. Now that is the reason that uh, we will see a lot more six, sub 6 gigahertz band uh, 5G implementation throughout the world. Uh, now let's also talk about uh, what do you say uh, the Wi-Fi bands as I've told you. Uh, your sorry the 5g bands uh, that i've mentioned as you notice we have various uh, what do you say bands for example so in sub 6 gigahertz we have below 1000 megahertz then the mid band etc and uh, so your smartphone also if they say it's 5g enabled needs to actually support all those bands to take advantage of it for example let's say uh, if you're in your area your isp that is airtel or geo is providing 5g on let's say uh, 4 gigahertz band or whatever and if your smartphone technically yes let's say it supports 5g and simply does not have that band you will not get 5g so again if you're buying a new smartphone now make sure that you check what 5g bands are supported because i've seen this uh, many of the reviews are simply not talking about it for example recently uh, uh, it was the case with the oneplus nord uh, it is they claim that it's a 5g capable phone 
but it supports just one band of 5G that is 79 and in fact that is sort of useless because even in the same city uh, ISP might be offering what do you say 5G on different multiple bands due to the reasons that I have mentioned in fact uh, uh, due to the licensing agreement one city might have one band other city might have another band that's the same case right now with 4G so a smartphone if they say is 5G capable it needs to actually support multiple bands of 5G otherwise there's a very very high chance though if you say your phone has 5G it might simply not work and I've seen this even with the OnePlus 8T that also supports just one band of 5G in the sub 6 gigahertz and only one band of 5G in the millimeter wave so if you're buying a new smartphone check 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 what 5G bands are supported for example recently I was happy with the Motorola G 5G smartphone it supports the sub 6 giga band and it supports all the 11 uh, bands so in fact anywhere in the world where we have sub 6 gigahertz it will actually work uh, so it's important to check if you're buying a new smartphone right now uh, check what 5g bands are supported many of the other reviewers etc will simply not mention about this but as this is important if you plan to keep that smartphone for example you're buying it now for next three years this is going to be important also uh, another thing is that as i've told you that sub 6 gigahertz band we have and the millimeter wave that we have uh, the thing is that with millimeter wave uh, only a few smartphones particularly on the android uh, front only a few uh, actually smartphones are supporting the millimeter wave for example the high-end flagships uh, the snapdragon 865 and the upcoming snapdragon 888 will support what do you say millimeter wave but again check what bands of millimeter wave they are supporting so that is important uh, in fact if, even if we talk about the latest iphones that is the iphone 12 uh, in India, the variant that is being sold only supports the sub 6 gigahertz band, not the millimeter wave. Only uh, the variant that is sold in US is supporting the millimeter wave as well as sub 6 gigahertz band. And looks like worldwide, uh, we'll have a lot more implementation of the sub 6 gigahertz band. And even in a country like India, which is very fast, a uh, very, uh, very big, I would say, I was talking, uh, we will have implementation of sub 6 gigahertz uh, a lot more. Yes, you might have some pockets of millimeter wave maybe in a dense commercial area or a shopping complex or a park uh, where you can experience but again there will be very small pockets of millimeter wave because it's way 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 expensive to implement proper uh, what do you say millimeter wave and blanket the area it's a lot easier to do it with the sub 6 gigahertz band so again guys if you're buying a new smartphone right now with that 5g monkey just check what 5G bands actually they support. And um, let's talk about uh, what is a 5G in India. Uh, this video is already becoming too big. So I'll actually make another video very soon about the state of 5G in India and when can we expect 5G in India. Uh, there are actually some variables, but if in the best case scenario, if everything falls into place, we can expect 5G rollout, not total rollout, limited rollout, I would say, by end of 2021 but again there are a few things that need to fall in place because of that and in india uh, definitely we are going to initially get the uh, sub 6 gigahertz uh, what do you say 5g uh, in india the millimeter might come on later on but as of now in india it will be sub 6 gigahertz band so again stay tuned that uh, to that video uh, what do i feel about 5g in india when can we expect and what are the issues right now why it's getting delayed uh, i'll talk about that so again guys stay tuned to my channel for that and again if you are not subscribed hit that subscribe button this is ranji then i hope to see you in my next video take care guys